Welcome. Uh, this is a uh, logic quick start tutorial. I don't want to waste your time, so let's get straight into it. Uh, what I'm doing first is I'm just putting some wheels onto these blocks here. Make sure they're lined up. Nice. Okay. Now, if you press E, what that's going to do is it's going to open uh, the wire mode. So, if we click on these little ports here, little port like plug symbols um, you can see that um, it opens a menu and none of these are connected to anything that's actually fine because what we're gonna do is we're gonna press tab to hide all widgets that's what those menus are called and we're going to press B to go into build mode and then we're going to place down a pilot seat and we're going to hold our cursor over it and press E again and what you'll see is that suddenly everything's connected. We can go into test mode with enter. And what we'll find is that actually everything works exactly how we want it to. We can turn left and right, we can move forward, we can move backward. The only thing is that if we want to break, what we have to do is we have to hold reverse until we come to a stop and then try and do this weird juggling act where we get perfectly still. That's pretty annoying and the game does have a feature for brakes so what we're going to do is open the wire mode again and we're going to grab this because as far as I can tell this car can't jump so we'll just use the jump action. We're just going to connect it to each of the brake ports. Now each time I do this you can see all of these other ports go grey. That's because you can only connect a um, port on the right side of the widget to a port on the left side of another widget and vice versa. So there's an explanation for that I suppose. <laughs> um, you can actually connect a if a port if like a widget has left and right ports you can actually connect them to the same thing but none of those have that so we don't have to worry about that at the moment spawn in my bot okay so now if we hold down the jump button for me for that space we should come to a screeching halt uh, everything else still works, it's just now we can break, which is excellent. Now the only problem with that is that if I'm at top speed here, and then I get out of my vehicle, while it, the vehicle goes flying, it hits something, and then I have to run all the way over there towards it. That's pretty tedious and a bit of an inconvenience to say the least. G would be a great thing if um, FreeGem added a handbrake. Actually, we don't need one. The reason why is because we can make our own. Um, so what you do, uh, we'll just go into logic here after pressing Q to enter the inventory. You can see there's a not logic gate. It says the description on the right hand side. We can read that for pretty much anything here. They all have descriptions. If the input is 1, the output will be 0, and vice versa. I'm just going to put that here. Uh, for the time being, the game is early access, so uh, it could change, but for the time being, you don't actually need to connect your logic blocks to your bot. You can just put them on the side, which is super nice. Uh, this port here, this is uh, active when the player or any player on their team is in the pilot seat. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that over here, connect it to the not gate. So now what that's going to do is if we're, we're in the pilot seat, we'll send a signal to the not gate and then it won't output anything, which is great because we don't want the vehicle to be braking all the time while we're inside of it, so then we wouldn't be able to move. But, if when nobody's in the pilot seat, there won't be a signal going to here, so then the not gate will go, oh okay, we'll send a signal 
to anything we're connected to. In this instance, we're connecting it to the brakes. Oop. <laughs> My bad. Did we get everything? We did. Okay, we can close that then. Enter test mode. Okay, so we should find now that if we get to top speed again, then we get out. Isn't that handy? It stops right in front of us. So we can get out, we can shoot people if we want to, and then we can get back in and just drive off again. Very nice. The next thing I'm going to show you is that um, the ports that you connect can actually only be the same color. Same color, what do I mean by that? Well, you see I've put down this um, aiming servo and it's automatically connected up and you can see there's a port here which is orange. That's actually because that's a vector port and all of these blue ones are closer to what you'd call a floater and integer. Or integer. Honestly, I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> uh, so, these will only connect to um, each other. So, it, you see it won't let me connect there, it won't let me connect to any of these. It actually says input port must go to output port and vice versa. That's kind of the wrong error message, but that's fine. Basically, you just can't put them together if they're not the same port. They have to be the same kind of, they have to be the same type, the same color. Um, but now that that is there, you can see that uh, it should just work because Freejam put in auto wiring. See? See the little red arrow is following where I'm pointing? We don't need to do anything special for uh, aiming weapons like that. We can just put things together, kind of have have as have as a little bit. Excuse me, uh, haphazardly. This would work fine if we just had done this. Or we could even make a smaller hinge. Anyway, this isn't a uh, weapon mount tutorial. Freegen did one of those of their own. Um, so, next, uh, what these inputs actually t uh basically output, what they bring out. So all of these, the seat, right mouse button, left mouse button, run, crouch, jump, all of them have a range from 0 to 1.0. So either they're not being pressed and they're all on 0, or one of them is being pressed and one of them is on 1.0. These two have a range of negative 1 to 1. Now why is that important? So over here, I've got a uh, axle servo, which takes an input from negative one to positive one. Uh, if we get a constant, which you can find in logic, constant block allows you to set a value which can be used throughout your logic. Put one of those here, we can then control exactly what kind of input we give the axle server. So I set it to 0 0.25 and we should see that it goes exactly to 0 0.25. So if we were to put in 1, it would go 180 degrees instead of just 45 degrees. Uh, so if we decided that we wanted it to go clockwise instead of anti-clockwise, well, we'd just enter a negative number. So we can go in here and, oh dear, we can't. It only t uh, goes as low as zero. Only there's a feature to do that. Actually, there is, once again. You can go into math. There's this block here called the sign math block. Output is the same as the input, but with the sign flipped. That basically means if we put in a positive number, it'll put in a negative number, 
and if we put in a negative number it'll put out a positive number. So we can bring this to let's say 2.50 this time. And what will happen, remember to click save, F5. Um, what should happen is, yep, it goes clockwise and it stops exactly where we expect it to. Uh, now, there is one more thing before I move on. I'm just going to very quickly go over this. The maximum input, because some, not all things have a maximum input. Uh, axle servos do. I don't think wheels do. I'm not entirely sure though. So take that with a grain of salt. But if we were to add both of these values together, see this is just a simple adder. We'll just add these values together. Um, so, oh sorry, I just realized I, that wasn't what I was planning to do. That's fine. Um, you can see I've added them together, so they're going to 0 0.75. 0 0.25 plus 0 0.5 is 0 0.75. If I were to then get this and go, actually I want this to be 1. You can go over 1 with a constant block, but for the sake of example, I'm doing it like this. That should be over here. That's because it takes a maximum value of 1, so it won't go past that point. It'll only go 180 degrees. And it won't go to negative 0.5 when you put in 1.5. Um, there's one more thing regarding that. Uh, you actually... You might be wondering what happens if you put in... Uh, like, two of the same... Like, two different uh, connections into the same port. You can actually do that, I'll show you. If I do that, so now they're both on the same port. What's going to happen is that it actually adds them itself, so you don't actually need an adder, okay? I just wanted to point that out quickly before I move on to the next thing. You don't need an adder, you can just put two things together and it usually adds them. I, okay, so the next thing is... Right, so as I was saying, these two go from negative one to one. So that also goes from negative one to one. So we actually, you'd think we'd be able to do this. Excuse me. There we go. So if we put that there, and I connect this to one of these, you would expect that having done that, what will happen is when I turn left and right, the servo will also turn left and right. Now it does it very slowly because by default servos move very slow, but that's exactly what happens. So that's handy, but what if we want to do a similar thing with pistons? So let's try that. Let's get a pretty big block here. We'll go to power joints, piston, can be controlled by connecting a control or pilot seat to its input. Yep, I mean, that's fine. Simple enough. Uh, and we'll, let's just do this. We'll connect it straight to there. And what we want that to do is we want it to go, if you're turning one way, maybe one will extend, and if we turn the other way, the other one will extend. Let's find out. Oh, they're not, neither of them are extending now. If I turn this way, they're both extending. Very strange. So, what's going on there is that pistons, like these ones, actually only take an input from 0 to 1. Which means that uh, when we're turning left, it's actually giving a negative input, so negative 1. We're turning right, it's giving a positive 1. So 
both of these are receiving a negative when we turn left and they're not extending because they go oh hang on we only accept zero or anything from that to one and you just gave us a negative number so we're not going anywhere and then when we turn right it goes oh that's a positive number we'll both extend now to get the behavior that we wanted, what we actually have to do is we have to figure out a way to separate the left and right inputs. It would be very handy if FreeGem added, like made it so that they were separate ports or made it so that, honestly, preferably, you could just set anything you wanted for any of these. Like, I'm just going to set this one to spacebar, this one to right mouse button, put in a middle mouse button if I want. But they don't have that yet. It probably will come, but not, not yet. So, instead what we have to do is we have to make do with logic. Uh, sorry, we'll go into math this time. And we've got these two blocks here. A less than math block and a greater than math block. These are basically, you know, if, you, if you've gone to high school, it's basically like zero, uh, zero less, th less than one. And it is, so it will output a 1. So in other words, true. That's what uh, 0 and 1 means in this case. 0 is false, 1 is true. So what we're going to do is we're going to first of all we'll disconnect these. And then we'll connect to these to here. And what we want to do is we want to compare the left and right uh, input to zero. Um, so you might be thinking, uh, let's just get a constant then. We'll just put uh, this here and connect that to there. We don't actually need to do that. Um, they are four CPUs, so if you do that a lot, it will spend it'll spend a ton of your CPU up at the top there. Um, the, this is actually already zero, because there's nothing in there. So we can just not even bother putting down a constant which has zero and we can just connect this to here on its own so now if we have um negative one because we're turning left this will go is negative one less than zero and if it is it will extend this which it i mean yeah it is and if zero is less than zero well it isn't so it won't output then um, here is one less than is one greater than zero, and it is so it'll output there. Same situation, and so we should find that we have essentially split uh, the left-right input on the seat into there we go into two different outputs. That's how you do that. It's pretty simple. Just good old uh, less than greater than that's all you need to do that excellent uh, I think that's all uh, sp splitting uh, explain that connecting yeah, yep that's all so uh, I hope you found this helpful if you leave a comment uh, and ask anything that you uh, didn't quite get I'll answer it happily I am here to serve um, but other than that I mean that uh, yeah that's how you d use wiring uh, have a good one